now I want to have a look at something a little bit more difficult and that would be this shot. I mean in the beginning it is totally easy, it's a very smooth and slow movement. There is a lot of perspective shift, so the foreground goes there, the background goes there, so that's great. But then in the end, let me scroll forward a bit, then it gets a little bit faster and more hectic and there's a lot of movement and a lot of motion blur. So that is something that is maybe not as easy to track as you might think it could be here in the beginning. So dealing with motion blur and very fast motion is something that you really have to know. Uh, one note about this shot and that is that because we have this fast motion here that there is some rolling shutter. Now, rolling shutter is a very typical effect for digital cameras, especially digital cameras with a CMOS sensor. So that means that first the sensor in the camera is recording the lines here on the top of the sensor and well line by line it continues recording of course not as slow as I'm demonstrating here but very fast but still if the movement is very very fast in your uh, camera movement then the sensor is not fast enough to really capture everything in that very second uh, on the whole sensor so uh, there will be some offset from top to bottom that is why you get this like kind of jello effect I mean here it's not so extreme but maybe if you have a look at this angle here that is or it, of course sh it should be clearly uh, a 90 degree angle but because of this very fast motion and the rolling shutter effect here where is it here that is something that is not maybe 90 degree but a little bit steeper angle and when I move the camera back and forth you get this typical jello effect so things that would normally be 90 degree and totally straight are now kind of stretched and are leaning to that side. So that is something that is very hard and currently there is no way in Blender how we can really compensate for that. So the only thing that we can get is a more or less good or bad solution. But just by the nature of the shot there will be a higher error because well Blender assumes everything behaves normally. So 90 degree angles are still 90 degree but if in the footage that's not the case then well there is just a little bit higher error. But anyway uh, I think it should be not that bad and especially because here's so much motion blur um, the CG will also be blurred so maybe it's not that obvious if you uh, put something in here. But anyway let's open that in Blender and try to solve that. So back in Blender we go to the movie clip editor then click on open, then go to camera tracking, old factory and then load this video MVI4182. So load that, open clip and then the first part of this video is not that hard to track so we don't need to do that. I mean if you play that back that is so easy. So we don't need to track that. So instead let's go to the last frame which is I believe 809 so somewhere around here is the last frame so in the timeline press E for end frame and then let's start just at frame 650 because before this should be totally easy so we don't have to track that so the interesting part is the last bit of the shot so at frame 650 I press S for start frame and then Alt A to playback and to cache that into the RAM. All right, so now when we want to track that, of course we can just add a marker. For example here, at the corner of this red spot. But if you now track that, then of course it stops very soon. That is because here we have a lot of motion blur and very fast motion as well. So just like in some shots before, uh, we have the case that the search area is not as big as the movement would require. So the feature just leaves the search area. So in that case it might help if we just make the search area bigger. So for example like that. So Control T to track that again. And that goes a little bit further but still 
all of a sudden it jumps totally away because here we have some other feature in that search area and blender thinks that this looks the same as the feature that we had on frame one so for whatever reason it jumps away and that is of course also not what we want so for that we also can try to increase the pattern size so we can scale that up for example like this and then try to track that again and that goes a little bit better so we are all the time at the same spot so that is great but then here it will just fail because of that huge amount of motion blur. So maybe we can fix that by setting the tracking from match keyframe to match previous frame. So now it tracks a little bit further even. And let's have a look at the marker. So the marker here is about 20 pixels the search area is 135 almost. So that is a setting that might work pretty well. So in that case, if we want to work with that setting for the next marker, then if you now just press Control left click here, then of course you would just add the default marker. But if you want to use that one, that setting here, then we can copy that from the active track so we can create a new tracking setting like blur track. Okay, and then copy from active track. Now we have a new preset and with control left click, we can add the same marker as we had here. So that will now also have the setting previous frame. It will have that pattern size. So now we can start tracking that and it will track pretty fine. But of course you can also just use one of the presets that come with Blender. For example, you could set it to blurry footage. Blurry footage also has a bigger pattern size, search area, and also it is set to previous frame matching. So back on frame one, or actually it's frame 650, but it's the start frame. So here we could set it to that feature, press Ctrl T, and it will also track pretty nice. But still here on these frames where you have that huge amount of motion blur, it will still fail. So maybe just increasing all these values can make it even better. So if we switch from blurry footage to fast motion, then this is now set to 31 and 300. Also the correlation value is lower and it is of course also set to previous frame. So eventually with that setting and that huge marker that could track even better. So that has now been able to track the whole sequence. So even with this excessive amount of motion blur that has been tracking just fine. So that's great. But of course, as you could see, it is also much slower, of course, because it has to just track much more. So you should also see if you really want to track that far right away, or if you maybe want to start with um, like blurry footage or the default setting that still tracks reasonably fast. And then just if it fails and if you have that huge amount of motion blur, then you can still change the preset. So maybe uh, let's continue tracking with the easier setting. It's not that easy, but well, blurry footage. So control T, track that. And then when it fails, you can just increase the size, scale it up and continue. Well, in that case, it still doesn't work like so. Maybe some manual tweaks. Okay, then also I think it would be good to set the speed to just double so that we can actually follow the marker while it is tracking. And then also set to locked L. So now we can see it better. And here you can see that we have to fix that. So here it jumps away. So that looks very similar to this one. So it just thinks it would be that feature. So something that you can also try is to just move the search area so that this feature that looks similar to that 
is not within the search area. So control T again, and now it doesn't jump away, or well, it just stops, but it doesn't jump away because that feature that looks similar is not within the search area. So here, maybe we can bring it a little bit down, continue on tracking, then here when it stops, just manually bring it back, Alt, right arrow, okay, and here it just stops, and I think that's fine because it will leave the frame anyway. So we can just have it stop, that's no problem. Then let's add some more markers, for example here. will also stop because that column gets in the way. So I think that should be now totally easy to track the first half of the shot. Now, as you can see here at frame 740, the motion blur gets really bad. So before that is also doable, it's not that bad and Blender is able to track that just fine. So here, that should not be a problem, but the real issues here are starting at frame 740. So instead of tracking every marker until that frame and then having to manually tweak it, maybe we can just stop the marker before it even reaches that frame. And that is where you can use the frames limit. So with the frames limit, we can tell Blender to always stop at frame 740 or maybe even at frame Let's have it stop here, frame 715. So that would be 650 until that frame, that is 65 frames. So the frames limit could be set to 65. And now every new marker that I can add here will stop after 65 frames. Like so. And after that, I can, if I want to, I can scale it up or make the search area bigger. And hopefully that will help Blender to track the rest of the shot. Because here we have really blurry frames. So that might be something where you want to have a bigger search area and a bigger pattern size. All right, so first I would suggest to just track everything until these uh, 65 frames, like so. Everything that was easy can now use that fast and easy preset. And then after that, if things get blurry, you can then switch to the slower but, well, more trackable preset. All right, so now with these tracked, we can start extending them so that they are also visible here in the last part of the shot as this one. So let's do the same to these ones. So that is ending here, but of course it should be longer. So just scale it up a little bit, make the search area much bigger, and then Alt, right arrow, and then also L, so that we can follow it and track it frame by frame like that, then the next frame it's just not visible anymore, so we can keep it disabled. And basically it's really just about scaling them up and then maybe just tracking frame by frame, trying to make sure that you always pick the right feature if it has to be re-enabled. But yeah, especially when there's so much motion blur then you really have to just do it manually. And that is why it is called supervised tracking, because you really have to carefully supervise it and to make sure that it doesn't jump away and during these periods of blur that it doesn't lose its feature so that it always comes back on the right track, like this one does or actually doesn't. So in that case it was so blurry that I couldn't even tell if it's still right. So here I can bring it back and then Alt left arrow 
and track it backwards and trying to make sure thereby that it really is the right spot that we are tracking here. Hmm, what could it be? I guess here. So in these cases where it's really so blurry that you really cannot tell just by looking at it, then it always makes sense to try to make it frame by frame and look back and forth because just by the movement of it, then you might be able to see if it really makes sense or not. So here, that is actually trackable, then it loses track. So here I would track backwards now. Well, it's now really hard to tell. Hmm. I guess something here. Oh no. See? So that was wrong. So now we have to track backwards from that point. So here from frame 791, I track backwards. And then during this period of blur, hmm, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so and here we can just disable that because there's no way we can tell if that is the feature or not. But I guess we have to disable that. Okay, so I will just continue with these and then later come back. All right, so now we have tracked something here in the first part of the shot. So maybe let's go to the end of the shot and then track all this blurry stuff here. So we've got something here, so that area might be already covered. So, but of course we have to track something here so that we can create our perspective. And maybe let's just add a marker here. And because we have blurry and fast motion, of course we set it to the preset fast motion. So control left click here and then just track frame by frame and it works pretty nicely. So that is one of the reasons why I love the hybrid tracking algorithm because it really, really can track that blurry stuff. So that's cool. So maybe just a little bit more. Okay, then something on the floor. That spot might be something until that frame, all right. Then maybe this reddish area down there. Okay, then this corner to that frame. Then maybe that white area here. Then something more, maybe here.
look at that. We've got already something here. So in that case, if this would be a little bit more on that spot, or maybe we can force it too. Yes, yeah, see, it leaves the frame anyway. So let's have a look at this one. So that is here in that corner. And actually we are, I would say, yes, we are at that corner. So let me first fix that because we can just join the two markers so that we don't have to track them double. So here we can already bring it back into that corner of that red spot. Okay, so here we almost reach the exact same spot of that marker. So now we can join them. And to join two markers, you have to make sure that they don't overlap. So of course it would be nice if we would be able to have overlapping markers. For example, to have this marker that is currently active and white and this one. And now while they are overlapping to press for example, control J and to have then the difference here between these overlapping frames um, so that this is interpolated. So now we have these two markers joined into one continuous track and that is pretty handy in some cases. Sometimes it can just lead to jumps, but at least, you know, you can do it if you want to. Pay attention that you don't get any uh, sudden jumps uh, in case it was not really the exact same spot. Okay, so we've got that and let's have a look. So at the last frame, we have plenty of markers. That looks okay. Then maybe we want to add something more here in the foreground. So for example, that is a pretty nice and bright feature. So we can track that until that frame and then backwards. Okay, until here. So now let's see, maybe press M to see that without the footage. So, ah uh, yeah, now that's to maybe L to unlock it. So we've got a nice coverage here on these frames, so that looks okay. But then that's not enough markers, definitely not. So we need something more here and especially in that area. So re-enable the footage again and then continue on tracking. So now we can easily add some markers here and then track them frame by frame. So motion blur is something where you really have to guess a lot and then hopefully you always find the right spot but it just it's just difficult to deal with that and it's also very tedious so when you're shooting then it's really good if you can avoid that kind of motion blur so rather shoot with a short shutter or a fast shutter speed so that you don't get this excessive amount of motion blur because it's it's just a pain All right, and now let's see if we can solve that. So of course, first we go to camera data and then enter the preset. And again, that was my Canon 550D, like that. The focal length was something about, I don't know, maybe 19 millimeter or so. Then um, we can collapse that. Then especially important here are the keyframes because if you now click on camera motion, that will just give an error because the keyframes are on frame one and 30 and we have to set it to 
at least 650 and something here. But let's see where we have the most perspective. And before we continue, I think we have to disable that so that it doesn't float around. So shift D like so. Maybe we can just start off with 650 and 700. Okay, so then also let's enable refinement, focal length and K1 and K2, camera motion. And that didn't go too well, so 240 is not acceptable, of course. Maybe let's have a look at the curves, if that is all right. So select everything. No, that looks fine, except maybe that one. So what's he doing? Oh, that is wrong, of course. So let me just clear everything after that. Alt T, but the rest looks fine. Shift S to solve again. And that is a little bit better, but still not acceptable. Okay, so let's see if we can fix that by choosing different keyframes. For example, if we don't set it to this area, but to something where we have a little bit more in the foreground. For example, maybe here, 700 until, I don't know, maybe 718 or so. Shift S. And now you have a solve error that is much better than before. So I guess that if you think of all the motion blur and all the rolling shutter, that might eventually be acceptable. Of course, it's still not great and might be improved, but for this crappy footage, it's I guess it's okay. So let's see if we can have a look at the 3D solution. So let's first set the floor. Now, don't be confused because since yesterday there's a little new feature, so we can also set the wall, but I will just continue on doing it uh, as before. So set the floor with these three markers. Then also here set the origin like that and the x-axis. And now let's have a look at the 3D. Of course, first we have to set up the tracking scene, so click that. And now I think that makes kind of sense. So let's see if we first can set a scale. So that and that, set the scale to one. That looks a bit better than zero. And yeah, I think that's not too bad. So if you think of all the motion blur and all the problems that we have here, then it's not that bad. So I think we can use that, but of course, before we should activate render undistorted. So here in the movie clip editor, go to proxy and timecode, just enable the checkbox here. And now that will also make sure that in the 3D viewport, in the background images setting, that this render understart will now have an effect like so. Now, of course, you won't have real-time playback anymore, but at least these points will fit a little bit better to their original point. So it seems as if they would all fit pretty nicely. Okay, so next to test that, we can maybe make this cube the column. So I think that we have to rotate the camera a little bit. In that case, I want to do that manually. So um, maybe I can rotate around that point. So Shift S3, then set the pivoting to the 3D cursor. And now when I zoom out or go full screen, and then press R and then X. Yeah, I think that makes a little bit more sense. So now that line here of the cube is aligned a little bit better with the column. I guess maybe it could be a little bit more over here. Yeah, no, that's still 
bit problematic. Oh no, so that fits pretty good. Here, of course, this is wrong because of the rolling shutter. So you can see that with the, within the fast movement that the line here of that column is not aligned anymore with our cube. But if the movement is slower, then it fits again. So that tells you that here we have this kind of distortion from the rolling shutter. So that, yeah, that's okay, I think. Okay, but I wanted to have something coming out of this hole anyway and not do anything with that column. So that is just to test if everything is okay. So to do that, I just bring my cursor between these points with Shift S3, then Shift A, add cylinder, G, Z, 1, and then move it down, make it smaller. bigger. Yeah, I think that's fine. So now if anything would fly out of this hole, so to say, then it should be pretty okay. So let's do something very simple. First, let me delete that cap of the cylinder, then bring the cursor here and make, for example, the monkey fly out of that hole. Of course, particle system also would be much more interesting, but just to test, this is easier. So let me set a keyframe here with I and then rotation and location. And then a few frames for that monkey comes out. Oh, well, anyway. Okay, so that should be on layer one, M and then one. This should be just the mask layer. So let me bring that on this layer. And that will be, hmm. Well, let's just forget about any shadow layer. So we'll do it like that. We have the foreground with the monkey and that will not be the background, that will be the mask layer. And I'm not actually sure if we want to render. We don't even need to render that. So we can just uncheck that and then create here this as the mask layer. Of course, we do need the vector blur. So let's render that when it comes out of that hole. Here, F12, like so. And there you go. There you have it coming out of that hole. All right. Uh, we don't want to render that column, so M and then bring that over here. And now let's see how that looks like if we render that. Okay, so in the end, I did insert a cube just to see if everything really sticks to that position, because I mean, a flying object is always easy to insert, which is great because the footage is hard to track. So if there are just flying objects, everything will be easier. But just to show you that the track actually works pretty fine, I have inserted that cube. If you look at that, I think it really sticks pretty well. So that's how you can deal with motion blur in Blender.